Okay, so I was um, I was born in London, 1969, a long time ago, <laughs> and um, I had a fascination with drawing when I was a young child, and I suppose that was coupled with going to the barbers at a very young age and seeing these elderly statesmen carve these very intricate lines into the foreheads of these you know, these other elderly statesmen and young and young men. And the barbershop then in the 70s was a place that um, the, the black community would assemble because the, the lending corporations at the banks wouldn't give them money to set up their own public businesses. So they had these barbershops in their homes. So I would go to these homes and people would be drinking Heineken and smoking and playing dominoes. Um, and that was a place where I kind of sculpted my own identity. So a fade is essentially it's a haircut that starts very, very low or from skin and it's graduated into the hairstyle. So generally there isn't a line. So sometimes you see somebody with skin and then you see a line and you see the hair. The best way I can describe it is Mr. T, for example. He has got that shaven side of his head and you see the lump of, lump of hair. The fade isn't like that. The fade is it's a, it's a graduation. Similar to what I have now, but it's growing back. But it's like a graduation from zero right into the hair. Some people say it originated in New York with the Jersey fade. Some say it comes from the tribe of the Watusis, you know, the Fuzzy Wazis. There's so many people trying to lay claim to this, this thing about the fade. Um, and I think young black men, even my father's generation, were always conscious of their look because, you know, they came from the Caribbean, Jamaica. And in Jamaica yeah, at the time was sort of like the kind of around the 60s, they were always suited, always, always in a shirt and tie. Even the barbers, like shirt and tie, even probably the barbers in New York, they were shirt and tie. So grooming was really kind of paramount. So the haircut was very much a part of their ritual, you know, kind of looking good was about self-respect. It's all about, um, you know, knowing yourself um, and putting a good face forward to the public. Then. And I came out to London after my exchange and carried on cutting my own hair and then cutting my little nephew's hair. Because mm -hmm. then I was, you know, 20, doing my masters and cutting these side lines in his head, just really having fun with it, you know. And then one day he was walking past the local barber shop after that New York skyline in his head. The barber said, Oi, come here, who did that in your head? That like, is my uncle, you know. He's at art school today, you know, so I can tell him you want to speak to him. And then I went to see the barber and he says, You're a barber? I said, No, 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 I'm at art school, you know, finishing my masters. He goes, I'll give you a job here. Yeah. On Saturday. I was like, no, 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 I don't want to be in the barber shop. I mean, I was surprised. I got it look. I've never cut hair before in my life. But I visually always felt it looked easy, you know, as a child sitting and looking at what the barber was doing. And as an adult sitting in the barber shop, you know, when I was 16, 17, looking at what the barbers were doing then. If you want to measure something, just go to the barber shop. You go you wanna know what what kind of vernacular is being used, you hear it in the shop. What kind of dress codes are being used, you see it in the shop. You know, what kind of music's being kind of played out there and see it in the shop. So I began to use the stories um, that I would hear in the barber shop and appropriate that into the work. And I began to use the, the, the shop as a place, as a site of creating ideas and images and photographs. Now, after work, working in the art world for a number of years, um, in around, I think about 2006, there's an artist called Jessica Walsang, a British artist. Hey, she good. asked me to do a lecture at Canterbury School of Art. And I said, Pfizer, can you come and do a lecture to our students, but do a performance? I said, what? I don't do performances. I just put on my work, but... She said, no, 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 can you do a performance? I was like, like what? She went, how about cutting hair? Oh, excuse me? She goes, yeah, just cut hair and give a lecture at the same time. So I'm not too sure about that. So I did it. So my son was off sick from school that same week. So I took him in as my model. He, you know, it's like 11 year old, 12 year old kid walking into the school. And I began to, they set me up in the, in the, in the an open studio area and surrounded me with like these chairs. I just went gang in his hair and they just began talking to me about my art practice and my ideas and the pattern that I was putting in his head and what the barbershop means to the community. And it worked, it just felt like it was right. And it was two hours went and I didn't realize where the time had gone. For, I mean, for tonight, Life Salon is, you know, it's gonna be like jazz, I mean, I'm gonna have to kind of make some of the stuff up, you know, because Life Salon is dependent on its location. You know, I call it a three-way kind of experience where there's me, there's the subject, and there's the audience. And there's this ongoing kind of like a tennis, three-way tennis game between me, 
them and, and, and the audience or society. I don't know what will come out of it because what it's relying on is relying on the audience conversing with me. They can talk about anything. There isn't a format, there isn't a series of images that I'm talking about. So they may even ask me about the environment, they may ask me about relationships, they may ask me about you know, how do you get an agent, you know, in kind of professional art world. You know, how do you find diversity in Wisconsin? You know, it could be anything. So lifestyle isn't purely about the black lava shop. You know, lifestyle is about that experience of intimacy, touch, um, that experience of the conversation. It looks at issues of masculinity. It looks at um, issues of economics. Um, it looks at the things that possibly make us who we are. Because I think not everybody gets a chance to go to university, but most people have gone to the unofficial university of going to this space and sitting and have a conversation or sometimes maybe you're not knowing of the barber you see so you go there as a, as a as a stranger and you just kind of listen and you get your hair cut and you leave or you're somebody who participates so everyone knows you in the barber shop and, and you're the kind of you know you're very known and you know you kind of participate so all of all of those different approaches have an effect on, on who we are